We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Okay, this is gonna be a crazy statement that I'm gonna make right now. Buckle up. Everybody wanna write a mission statement and a vision statement for your life. Are you in on God's vision? What you're hearing from people is that the world is the devil's because he's the prince of the air. Music is, is the devil's. Art is the devil's. This world is the devil's. God just kind of, oh, what a, God went on vacation. Bruce Lawn. Music is from the devil originally, so you have to choose God or devil. So, Angela, I disagree with you here. I don't think music is from the devil. This is a bad theology on your part. Not just your part, but a lot of people's part. No disrespect to you. This is, I'm not attacking you, so just hear my heart. Music's not from the devil. There's one verse, I believe in Ezekiel, that says the something about timbers, instruments, that Satan created music. It never said that Satan was a worship leader. It never said that Satan oversaw the choirs. It never said that Satan drove music. It doesn't say any of that in the scriptures. Music is from God. All things, all good things are from God. Music is one of them. Music is highly emotional, and it could be used to manipulate people, but music is not from the devil. I, th I think everything is under God's dominion. I think Jesus reigns right now. Every genre of music. Now, maybe the industry is, you, we, we could talk about that, and, and, and the stuff that, that drives art is oftentimes debauchery and just things that are completely the antithesis to the gospel. These corporations, multinational corporations making billions of dollars off the Lil Nas X's and the drill music and trying to sign the latest hot rapper despite all of the legal issues around them, right? And, 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 and trying to make a quick buck off of these guys. And I could get into that if you want to. I come from the music industry. I understand how it works. But I don't think music in and of itself is corrupted. That's like saying food is corrupted. No, McDonald's and fast food and processing companies have corrupted food. But food in and of itself is not corrupted. Food is good. You can receive food. You can receive good music. It's what's done with that food that's corrupted. No, it doesn't. It never says that uh, Lucifer was the angel of music. You, I hate to break it to you. That's not scriptural. That's cultural. There's nothing in scripture that says that. Th that even the the perversion that Satan has, the ability to pervert, is still on loan to him. I've always heard Lucifer was the angel of music. So why? It, you heard. You hear a lot of stuff. You hear a lot of stuff that's not in the Bible. It doesn't say that. Yes, it says he was more beautiful than the other angels. Okay, he doesn't say he did the bite. He doesn't say he played music, right? Like, we could look up the passage. This is the issue with cultural Christianity is a lot of us can fall victim to it, and then it skews the way you pursue, you perceive good things. This concept is the concept of how a lot of people have, have fallen into purity culture. Because you you start perceiving sex as gross and disgusting because you've been conditioned that as a kid. And then you grow up and you have an issue with purity culture and it could be detrimental. This is the same exact thing with music and art. You guys are convinced that music it belongs to the devil. It doesn't. That's not in scripture. I'm going to read the scripture to you right now. You guys ready? You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect and beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The Sidereus, the topaz and the diamond, beryl, onyx and jasper, sapphire, turquoise and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timber, timbrels and pipes was prepared for you the day you were created. You were anointed cherubim who covers you. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fury stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. So this is believed to be about Lucifer. I used to believe uh, that Lucifer was the angel of music. Then I read the Bible. Hello. Okay, so let's do this. So let's look up Blue Letter Bible and let's go to the original language. This is this is this is a great way to do study. I mean, we can we can do an exhaustive look at what Ezekiel was and who it was writing to and the the apocalyptic nature and that it was written around the same time as Daniel and it was written around the same time as Jeremiah and how they were all contemporaries. Okay, but let's go to the Blue Letter Bible and we're gonna go back and we're gonna pull up some of these words and and, and you'll discover that these words have these words does not mean that. Um, that he was the angel, uh, that he was the choir director in heaven. And then you were anointed cherubim. So let's go like, a, like with the verse 14. You were anointed cher cherub, cherub, okay? The cherub. Let's look at what the cherub is. Okay, so here is that word cherub, okay? You guys see verse 14? You were anointed cherub, okay? Cherub means uh, an angelic being, guardians of Eden, flanking God's throne, an image from hovering over the ark of the Lord's covenant, as the chariot of Jehovah, throne, yeah, throne guardians, has nothing to do with music. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting that so many folks have uh, created an entire theology 
around this idea that Satan was the the, the, the Lucifer was the 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 angel of music and therefore music is corrupted and therefore there's there's generally speaking music is bad. Isn't that interesting? And it's not in scripture. Yeah, so the so the Catholics believe that. Yeah, but the Catholics also believe that scripture and church history are equal. So I just read I just read to you what the throne garden were. They weren't they, it wasn't musicians. An, an angelic being as guardians of Eden as flanking God's throne as an image from hovering over the rule of the Ark of the Covenant. This is why stuff like Blue Letter Bible are, are great resources. Like, look up Blue Letter Bible, look up these, these, these verses in the Blue Letter Bible, go back to the original. Yeah, the first time we see the word cherub is in Genesis chapter 3. These aren't biblical ideas. These are cultural ideas. These are, you were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was covering. So this is about the stones of sapphire. The workmanship of your timbers and pi pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. So the, the workmanship of your timbers and pipes were, was prepared for you. Who prepared the, the, the workmanship of the timbers and pipes? God did. God prepared the workmanship of the timbers and pipes. Not Satan, not Lucifer. How do you read that? And jump to the conclusion that all mu the music is belonging to to the to Lucifer, to devil. How? How do you guys come to these conclusions? Because this is cultural Christianity. God created the workmanship of your timbers and pipes. It was prepared for you on the day you were created. They, these were before things, before the fall. The devil will continue to pervert God's creations to tempt people so they fall into sin. That's all it is. Music is very influential and the enemy will use it. Absolutely. And the devil could only pervert. He cannot, he cannot create. That's another heresy that a lot of folks start falling into. You are assuming that because he's the prince of the air that all of a sudden Jesus isn't on the throne anymore? You sure you want to have that conversation? You sh is, That's what you believe. If you read Ephesians, if you read 1 Corinthians 15, if you read Psalms 24, God, God is on the throne. Jesus is on the throne. Jesus is king. Not Lucifer. It's not... It's not, it's not God is up here and Lucifer is up here and Lucifer controls everything. And God just kind of, oh, what a, God went on vacation. Lucifer's just running amok. No, Jesus is on the throne right now. He's making his enemies his footstools right now, not in the future, right now. You guys think I'm stupid. I'm not stupid, guys. I, I know this. And he could do and he can use music however he wants to. Guys, I want to make sure that you guys know about our upcoming podcast launch, October 20th. The tickets for that are pinned up at $7, but I want to give you guys an exclusive preview so that you guys can get an idea of what to expect. I've always thought it was nasty to not put in two weeks. Mm -hmm. I quit that day. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even like, wasn't even in the mood to like sleep with these girls, but I felt like I had to. How come none of these personalities are ever doing anything benevolent? <laughs> so I think think that there could be a spiritual, maybe potential demonic Got component it. that's in there that we haven't explored. The fact that I was single until I was 40 and yep. I knew I was never going to plan a church being yep. a single guy. I wasn't, gonna, I, didn't, I wasn't about to set myself up. You know, and then I remember one time my uh, financial advisor at the time, she was like, hey, did you know you're spending more than you're making like every month? And I was like, oh, for real? And I'm supposed to, you know, perform yeah. this uh, production assistant is like, hey, Here's a Viagra, take it if you want to take it. Whoa. Don't if you don't, it's in your hand, it's yours. I teamed up with Moment for the exclusive live premiere of the anticipated Bless God podcast. And the tickets for that are only $7. When you get to the main page, click the yellow get ticket button, scroll down to the add-ons and throw in your ticket to the after party as well as some exclusive merchandise. And I will see you he can use technology however he wants to. He can use YouTube however he wants to. He's on the throne right now. And any bit of influence or, or authority uh, that, 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 that the devil has is on loan to him by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So how do we come to these wonky conclusions? And think about this for a second. If you're a young creative, if you're a young creative, or if you're a young ambitious entrepreneur, or if you're into tech, and, and what you're hearing from people is that the world is the devil's because he's the prince of the air. Music is, is the devil's. Art is the devil's. This world is the devil's. Think about, one, think about the implications of that for the young creative and the entrepreneur. Two, think about that for your own life. 
What's the point of getting married if the devil's on the throne? What's the point of having kids if the devil's on the throne? What's the point of building a business if the devil's on the throne? What's the point of doing anything if, if the world's just going to hell in a handbasket? Why? 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 For what? For what? Oh, God's just, God went on vacation and just left us down here to, you know, figure it out on our own. No, Jesus is on the throne right now. Jesus is redeeming the world onto himself right now. Act accordingly. Get in line. Live your life. Stop assuming that. Oh, it's just all, well, well, I guess it's just all bad. Right? And this then directly impacts how you view your life, how you view your own kids and your potential grandkids and your going great, great grandkids because you think, well, any minute, it's all just going to go to hell. Or God's, God's using us as his people to redeem the world back onto himself. God's on mission all the time. God is missional. Are we in on the mission of God? Not our mission and our vision. No, no, no. Are we in on the mission of God? Everybody want to write a mission statement and a vision, vision statement and a mission statement for your life. Are you in on God's mission? Are you in on God's mission for the world? This is, this is why bad theology hurts people. Because you start then thinking that it's all, it's all gone to hell. What's the point? What's the incentive to, to start a YouTube page? What's the incentive to build a business? What's the incentive to have a family? What's the incentive? Bad theology hurts people. You will walk around with a cloud over your head and a victim mentality thinking the world's out to get you when actually Jesus is on the throne and you're a part of his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. All authority has been given to me, therefore go and make disciples. Bro, the prince of the ruler of the kingdom of the air refers to how he controls this world. How? Where? Where does it say that Satan controls this world? Influence and control aren't the same thing, fam. Influence and control aren't the same thing. Can Does this Satan have some influence in, in certain pockets? Yes. But who's in control? Who's on the throne? Psalm 24, 1. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The whole world and all its people. Jesus is on the throne right now. Jesus is in control right now. God is in control right now. It's called the providence of God. Calvinists. They get this right. <laughs> they get this part really right. You're expecting for everything to fall apart. What if God's rebuilding it? Or what if there are parts that have to fall apart so that God can restore and redeem different aspects? Maybe music is one of them. We need to be on God's mission. We need to be on mission with God. We need to be aligned with the things that God is doing. Right. And remember that God and G Jesus has all authority. We can go back to first Corinthians chapter five. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive by each one of his own order. Christ, the first fruits afterward, those who are Christ in his coming. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God. The Father, when he puts on an end, when he puts an end to all rule and authority and power, for he must reign, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. I mean, the last enemy that will be destroyed is death, for he has put all things under his feet. All things are under his feet right now. Therefore, this is Paul writing the church in Ephesus. Some, some believe that, that, that Jesus' mom, Mary, actually went to Ephesus, which is crazy if you think about it. <clears throat> I'm, not, I, I'm not a church historian, but that's, that's what some believe. So that's why I like this so much weight on this book. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks, making mention of you in my prayers, that the, Lord, our, uh, that, the, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is exceeding greatness, what his exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality, 
and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in which to come. Jesus is far above all principality. This is clear as day here. You, can, you, you can't take this out of context. Jesus is far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. You're the biggest names out there. Whoever you think is whoever, uh, he's above it all. Not only in this age, not only today, the one Paul's writing this, which is t- today, but also in that which is to come. And he, check it out, and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So it says that he put all things under his feet. What does all mean? All means all. It's not super deep. He put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things. If all things are under his feet, all things, including music, including YouTube, including every facet of everywhere, all things are under his feet. And he gave him to be the head. Who's the head? Jesus is the head. And we are what? And he gave him to be the head. We, what are we? The church is his body. Okay? This is going to be a crazy statement that I'm going to make right now. Buckle up. Buckle up. He put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head, Jesus is the head, to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fulfills all in all. If Jesus is the head and the body is the church and all things are under his feet, that means that all things are under the feet of those who are under authority of Jesus. If Jesus is the head and we are the body and all things are under his feet, what should that tell you about your position as a part of Jesus' church? Here we go. I mean, he echoes it in Colossians. Thank you, whoever sent this to me. Um, Having disarmed principalities and powers, he also made a spectacle spectacle of them triumphing over them in it. This isn't this isn't in the future. This is here and now. Okay. He disarmed the principalities and the power. This is here and now. This isn't someday when everything goes to hell in a, in a handbasket. Then someday, no. This is here and now. Let's go to First uh, John. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us the understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true and eternal God. So again, I mean, I, 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 I see this as they're complementary passages. These are together true. Scripture has to interpret Scripture, right? So the world is under the sway of the wicked one. Are they under the control of the wicked one? No, they're not. They're under the sway of the wicked one. Influence and control are not the same thing. I'll prove it to you. I have influence over you guys. It's 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 a lot of responsibility. I have influence over you guys. I can sit here and tell you guys everything you need to know about how to get fit and lose weight. 75% of Americans are overweight, 40% are morbidly obese. And I could sit here and I could have all the influence in the world over you. I could tell you to eat high volume, low caloric foods. I could tell you to triple the amount of chicken you eat. I could tell you to work on your compound lips. I could give you all the information and I could do it in a persuasive manner. But I have no control over you. I can't make you get up and eat better. I can't make you get up and go to the gym. I can't make you get up and, 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 uh, but I could do my very best to sway you. Sway and influence sway influence are not the same thing as control. I do my very best to sway you guys to live a life that blesses God. Pun intended. Right? I'm eating apple pie my dear. <laughs> I have no control over you. I have sway and influence over you. But at the end of the day, yeah, Coach Greg can <laughs> come on, shout out to Coach Greg. Uh, but I can't control you. Coach Greg can't control you. Jeff Cavalier can't control you. Jeff can give you all the things you need to do to get shredded. All the eating the caloric deficit, make sure you have the right amount of protein, make sure you go to sleep early at night so your criminal levels don't improve, so you don't get hungry and eat nonsense. I could, we could give you all the information. We could persuade you. We could plead with you. Please stop eating 
processed, terrible, junky food. It's diminishing your life. Stop sitting around so much. Go outside. Go extra. We could, we could plead and we could sway all we want. But at the end of the day, you get to decide your choices. And I would say God has some degree of supernatural transformation. Because some of you guys have heard this, myself included. I had heard this, I knew this, but some, some, so God did something. And all of a sudden I got into fitness and then that, I got into the Bible, right? Influence and control, not the same thing. And so, yeah, the devil is trying to sway you. Indeed. But God's on the throne and God's in control. I gave you guys the positive inverse of that, Right. Guys, be, be careful. Like, like when you have a thought and you have a thought, God can't use this or God can't do that. Bad theology hurts people. We, we limit it to that. We the limit to prosperity theology. We don't limit it to this woe is me, the devil's bad, everything, uh, excuse me, the, the, the world's bad, the devil is in control. We don't extend it, we don't extend that thought to that. That your theology around what you believe about the devil has impact on how you live your life. Your theology about what you believe about when the world's going to end and how it's going to end and whatever has impact about your life. I mean, I hear a lot of you guys, we start talking about relationships and marriage. And a lot of you guys are like, oh, I don't want to get married because the world's going to end. I don't want to have kids because the world's going to end. I don't want to bring kids into an evil world, overpopulation. No, fam. No. They did a study and they found out that for every baby born it will, it will provide 7x the output of resource that it consumes. This is from a reference that uh, Jordan Peterson made on Pierce Morgan. Okay, For every baby that is born, they will output 7x the resource and the value that they consume on average. 7x. Because it's not a zero-sum game. Think about that for a second. The population of the world has doubled in the last 50 years, 60 years. The population of the world has doubled in the last 50 or 60 years. But yet we're more prosperous. Po the, the poor people today are substantially better off than rich people 150 years ago. Millions of people being pulled out of poverty. On a macro scale, outside of a couple outliers within the last couple years. Violence, violent crimes have been down. All of these different things. By that explanation, can we say uh, God, Holy Spirit, influence or sway too? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, th I think it's more than that. I think Holy Spirit can control your heart and give you a new heart and, give, and make you born again. Send, send me and bless God. God.